Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Got my good friend Phil here. I'm doing a public service announcement on behalf of Wall Street. They thank Main Street for their contribution. Let me explain. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out, what you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Phil, you know, the government has one job and this is the only job they do really well. and want to make sure their donors remain rich. Do you want to explain? Right. So it's kind of like what we say, you know, it's inflation uh, going up, you know, asset prices elevate. That's only great if you have assets, right? You know, so the, the, the divide continues and, uh, and oh, we'll combat it with interest rates. Well, interest rates are helpful if you have a ton of money already that you can sock away in a money market fund and collect 5%, right? Those of you that don't, that doesn't really help. So you're absolutely right. The rich get richer and the poor stay poor. What's really interesting though, is this chart of the inflation. This is what really this is about is inflation. And you get them doing victory laps about how they're making progress towards 2% and they can't let off until we get back to 2%. The problem with that is it, doesn't really fix inflation. Inflation is still growing, whether it's, you know, 2% or 3% or 4% or even 1%, you're still growing and you haven't repaired any of the damage that was done. Really this culmination of money printing and the Fed being accommodative to the banks, you know, and they're still being accommodative. You know, why don't they roll off all the mortgage backed securities that they're holding? Well, they can't because they would break the banks. So when they're telling you the banks are healthy, the banks are not healthy. They're only healthy because they have two sets of training wheels on at the moment and you're bailing them out because this is a tax on everybody right? This is a tax on those that don't have assets. It'd be one thing if you were able to gain some interest, significant interest payments off of this, off of big cash holdings or whatever, but you can if you don't have the money. And a lot of people don't, they're just not in the position. So here it is. It's really ugly looking and it's going to get uglier as we'll show. But Bob, I don't know about you. I, you know, outside of a recession, I, I don't see how they're really going to corral this. Now, see, there's some people really, really need to understand. So they changed the tax code in the United States. Essentially, if you make less than $50,000, a year, you're, you're really not paying any federal income tax at all. So, but the government needs to spend money in excess of what it takes in. So the other way you attack your citizen is by inflation. And the government just basically, inflation is simply a, ta a tax on the poor. And and whenever somebody from the government is, is telling you they're doing something for you, but creating a deficit in their uh, in their fiscal accounts is that they're actually doing it to you, not for you. And, and, and this is really smart on their on their behalf because they could claim that they have nothing to do with inflation. It's evil corporations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Biden even said it yesterday. I'm doing all I can. It's up to the corporations now to lower their prices on behalf of the citizenry when they caused it in the first place. But we've seen this movie before. That's why we're really at a regime change in fiat too, Phil. Mm -hmm. And this next chart is, is you know, and before, as you're bringing that up, remember, look, this happened in the 1870s. It happened in 1932. It happened in 1970, which were talking about here and it's happening now basically they got to reprice the fiat mm -hmm. and i'll let you talk about this chart but this is amazing this is why i own energy gold miners silver miners and bitcoin i think this cake is baked phil i do too and i think that's why you're going to see bigger money rotate into bitcoin and why i think you know bitcoin really it, it, that's its purpose it was to be an escape hatch or an inflation hedge and i think you have to really understand like you know read a book like the bitcoin standard right to kind of wrap your head around what this thing does how it works and why it's not really a ponzi and i think that's the biggest misconception why people are not getting into it you know because they just think there's a flaw in that. But when you start seeing corporations moving their treasuries over, when you see banks actually holding this as an asset, we saw that uh, yesterday on some filings, some 13F filings, banks have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. You have to think, these guys aren't stupid. This isn't dumb money. When you have BlackRock hawking for an ETF, true, they just want to make their fees, but they also know that this is an asset class, a new asset class that's going to be rising. And if you have something that's rising, you can make a lot of
lot of money off of it in terms of fees. So they've told you it's not going anywhere. Okay, so you can at least trust that. Now, what's important, though, is this chart, this risk of resurgence on inflation. I think this is why the Fed's holding the line in terms of we can't cut now because we're right there with, you know, 74 to 82, right? This is the, the inflation cycle versus the current inflation cycle. So our might be a little hard to discern, but green is our current situation. And then the darker color line is 1974 to 82. And you can see where I think it was about 1977 or so we really started cranking back up. Now, that could happen again because what might happen is we get a recession we do get a deflationary cycle initially but it breaks things because if you guys haven't noticed anytime there's any kind of pressure on the system all the wheels come flying off and the banks are in trouble and everybody's asking for a bailout because if you don't bail us out the whole system's going to implode could we could be back to that you know by the q4 of this year even we'll see but the point is is that there's going to be an overwhelming need to start printing again which is going to kick inflation back up and what are they going to do they're going to pee the peasants with a handout like they did last time and everybody's gonna be oh that's cool but if you don't if you don't see that this is now the new normal going forward and everybody's gonna be looking for a handout like last time then you need to understand that you're going to your wealth if it's not hedged in something if it's just sitting in dollars they're going to debase you you're going to be bailing them out so you got to have hard assets you got to have something so I would implore you to have at least some sort of hard asset whether it's real estate gold Bitcoin you got to start you know socking that away I think you have a good opportunity coming up because I do think we're going to see a recession and I do think you're going to see asset prices come down. And I think you have to buy that dip because if you don't, boy, you're going to be paying for it in the next printing cycle that comes and it's going to come. Yeah. And I'll say that, you know, the chart shows 20% inflation, but things are closer to 40%, you know, at least on things that hit people. I mean, you're getting 22% increases in insurance rates, you know, yeah. one year, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, and I think if you look at the, across the supply chain, I know, you know, I know food is at least up 40% since 2020 because I buy the food and I could see it. And I'm even looking now, I noticed, Phil, and you guys, I encourage you to take a look and put it in the comments if you're seeing this or not, is that I've noticed here over the last 30 days, at least here in Southern California, that they pushed through a bunch of price increases on all the items in the supermarket that are what I would say the things that most people buy, you know, the not the not the top shelf premium stuff, but the uh, the value stuff. I mean, I'm looking at water that last year was, was a dollar a bottle and now it's going for three for two dollars you know things like that and i think they're testing the water to see how sticky how price sensitive people are in certain categories before you start seeing them put on on sales but it's getting to a point now where it's really getting difficult for people to really even just manage their existence not even managing their life anymore it's like what do i even do and i think all coming to a head i it's ironic that 1977 you got the big surge that was the year of malaise that was jimmy carter ushered in Ronald Reagan. You got Biden now trying to talk inflation down, you know, right there with, with Trump snipping at his heels. And it would be really interesting to see if Trump is able to do a second term, is that is he going to be stuck trying to drive this inflation monkey down, you know, and basically put the country into a pretty deep recession? Because the only way out of this is right now is a really, really deep recession and a government retrenchment. That's where the recession is coming from, is where the government has to stop spending and, you know, take your medicine that way almost like what, what they're doing in Argentina. I just don't know if people have the uh, political courage to do any of that. So the market's going to impose a tax on them. Right, and the right. only thing we could do is outrun it. Right, and right. that's what we're kind of communicate with you guys today. Just stay the course. You know, I mean, you can trade your wiggles in and out, but, you know, Bitcoin will go higher. Gold will go higher. Silver will go higher. Oil and the energy complex will go higher. It's just that, you know, if you're trading, you can trade the wiggles. But if you're holding for the next three to five years, it's the only way you're going to be able to stay ahead of the inflation monkey. Yeah, I totally yeah, I agree. Know. And I think the chart here, basically the fractal of the 70s playing out, I think that plays into a recession because we would see a continued drop in inflation in that scenario. And then the reaction to that would be to accommodate back into some form of QE from the Fed. And then you're going to get this big rotation up, which means ultimately that, yeah, like we said, you want to hedge that inflation, but also that means you want to be long these assets, like Bob mentioned, the metals, Bitcoin, maybe some select crypto those the mining stocks whether it's metal miners or bitcoin miners i would suggest for bitcoin miners you know wait 
more till after the halving to see who who survives because there is a bit of a, a income crunch because of the Bitcoin halving and, and their income stream gets hit. But on the other side of that, going into this era that we'll have beyond 2026, I think those things are going to do many, many, many multiples. And you're going to need that because you're going to need it to outpace inflation. Otherwise, you're going to be in the poorhouse. So that's a nasty thing about how you when you tax the, the citizenship via inflation is you, it's a, a slow death because you're you're seeing everything go up around you. Maybe the home you're in is rising in value. But in reality, the pay that you make is going down in value and your assets in dollars is going down in value. So you got to have firepower to outpace that. And, and that's why we're hammering on this stuff now, but it's going to matter in the years to come. That's right. Remember the silent scream. You heard it here first. We'll talk to you guys later. See you tomorrow. See you guys later. Trade Genius.